Guys, welcome to the Nerd Enthusiast Podcast. Uh, I am your co-host Richard Eiley. I'm here with my co-host Matthew Morosi. Howdy. Happy Game Awards. It's on, we're on the eve of the Game Awards, very close to it. Uh, should be just around the corner. We were going to do a special Thanksgiving podcast, but what we end up doing is talking about the Game Awards and our predictions for the Game Awards a little bit longer than we thought. <laughs> uh, about a full hour. and We, we thought it would take like 30 minutes. It, I thought it was going to take like 20 but uh, we went into a whole bunch of different stuff. We went into some tangents. It's a great episode. We kept it natural instead yeah. of just trying to go through it as fast as we possibly exactly. could to get onto the other topic. Yeah, and I, I think it, I think it made for a great podcast in of, in and of itself. Um, so here it is, uh, our Game Awards predictions podcast. Please enjoy. It's gonna be an unstructured or a less structured video of the podcast. I'm a little concerned. It's a little loosey goosey, but it'll be fine. But I think we're gonna be okay. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I feel confident. We're gonna dive right in. Yeah. So let's uh let's dive. Before we do anything though, we are gonna do uh so you think you're Gen X. Um what I do need to look up is your current score, Matt, uh, if you don't mind. Uh you are currently at two full points, uh two half points and one quarter point. Um, half points and quarter points are moot. They don't actually count towards anything. They're just fun little badges for Matt. I'm, I'm th- mm. thankful. You should be thankful. Why? That I won't say anything about it this week. Okay. Wow. I am thankful. <laughs> no, no, uh, no snarky remarks about how your points combined or anything. I like that a lot. So Matt's at two points right now. Uh, Gen X. So you think your Gen X is I sing uh, or I read off the lyrics of a Gen X song and Matt tries to guess the name of the artist and the name of the song based on my weird reading of it. Uh, and they're all Gen X songs, quote unquote, that Matt should know since he's a Gen Xer. Yeah, except um, for last week. Last week, you didn't know El, Fitz, you El gave Fitzgerald. You me a song from like the 1930s. Come on, man. You said any song before 2007. I uh, made mistakes. Mistakes were made. And you didn't tell me that I can't do songs from 1930s. So maybe this is another one. Maybe. We'll see. Are you ready, Matt? Yes. Your, your Gen X card is on the line. I got a plan to get us out of here. I've been working at the convenience store, managed to save just a little bit of money. We won't have to drive too far. Just across the border and into the city, you and I can both get jobs and finally see what it means to be living. You see, my old man's got a problem. He lives with a bottle. That's just the way it is. He says his body is too Stop. old. Hang on. I had to listen to that back in my head. Okay. I don't make it easy by like reading it the way I read it. And uh, that's the point. You <laughs> Repeat it one more time for okay. me. Okay. Okay. I, I thought I was getting there for a second, but then... You want me to start from the if top? I, if I go like this, just stop talking. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, my brain needs to... I mean, I have my glasses on, so I can't see anything. Cause okay. Was off, but no, yeah, I'll okay. just yell. Yeah, yeah. Just scream. Or, or just say... Hey, just scream. <laughs> uh, no, I won't listen to that. You have to scream. Uh, you want me to start from the top? Yes. I got a plan to get us out of here. I've been working at the convenience store. Managed to save just a little bit of money. We won't have to drive too far. Just across the border and into the city. You and I can both get jobs and finally see what it means to be living. You see, my old man's got a problem. He lives with the bottle that's just the way it is. He said his body's too old for working. I say his body's too young to look like his. My mama went off and left him. She wanted more from a life than he could give. I said, somebody's got to take care of him. So I quit school, and that's what I did. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I have no no clue. Uh, um, yeah. Let me start at the beginning of my, my mind. My, yeah, you know, walk us my through mind what space. you're thinking. Yeah, tell us, verbalize. My, my, I'm going to go with what my immediate inclination was yeah. this is a female singing. Okay. Is that wrong? I... <laughs> I, what's funny is I don't know what. Yeah, I don't. I forget. What the fuck? Uh, I can't. Yeah, I forget. I think Sorry it's. Sorry, spiked the mic there. I Gee, think it's what? a man. I'm pretty sure it's a man. You don't even know. Yeah, I forget. I mean, I I know what the person looks like, and based on what they look like and how they sound, I I don't. I never looked into whether or not. 
I'm not. Hey, I'm not the Gen Xer here. I'm a millennial, bro. I don't know who these singers are. <laughs> I know what I am. <laughs> All right. Um, this isn't me on trial, Matt. It's you. You need to know who this is. Is this a song from the '90s? Yes. No, in 1988 is when it was released. Uh, it is a woman. Now that I'm looking at more pictures of her, yeah, I, it, she's very clearly a woman, and I apologize to this artist. I'm trying to think of like a woman that you wouldn't recognize from the, yeah. Name of the band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fleetwood Mac? Uh, no, Fleetwood Mac has a female singer? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, cool. I'm not okay. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. <laughs> that's that is wrong. All right, I have no, I have no idea. I just give up. Do you want me? To, do you want me to sing it this time? No, just no. Please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> Tracy Chapman, Fast Car. You got a fast car, and I got a plan to get us out of here. Working at the convenience store, man, just save just a little bit of money. That one. Do you know that clicking. song? It's not clicking. Matt, it's not, this it's is not one my... of the most Gen X songs ever. Uh, maybe if I heard it, it'd be different, but... Zero points once again, Matt. I'm sorry. Are you okay? I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine not knowing that song. It's not an embarrassment. It's not like it was like Pearl Jam or something. All right, that's fair. I, I mean, that's a faint... Okay. I mean, you know what? It's okay. Matt, do you think maybe, like, after, you know, as far as we've gotten, you only have two points right now, do you think maybe you might be a millennial? Never. All right, we'll see. We'll see where you. What what number do you have to achieve to not be a millennial uh, by the end of the season? By the end of this year, there are no borders or boundaries. Okay, I like that. Have you been playing Death Stranding? Is that what that is? <laughs> Bangarang, Peter. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, all right. I don't know what I'm talking. About. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about either. Uh, Game Awards predictions, Matt. Uh, do you have the doc over there? I have a doc over Beautiful. here. You should have it as well. I, I do. I just got to bring it up. I'll let you bring it up while I read off the first thing. So what I did was I went to the Game Awards official website. This is the Game Awards from Jeff Keighley. It's not from like IGN has their Game Awards. All different websites have their own awards. Mm. Different podcasts have their own awards. This is, this is none of those things. Yes. We're going through the Keighley Awards, the Game Awards, and we are just saying who we think is going to win. Now, this does not mean that Richard and I played every game. We're not saying who we think should win. Baseless speculation to win. Yeah, just from what we the tea leaves that we have read from the internet, like looking at what people have been saying about these games, we are drawing baseless assumptions on who will be winning. This is uh We didn't talk about this earlier, but do you want to keep track of who guesses what and we can oh, go back yeah. and see who's right later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll Everything's a, little... a game with us. Richard is very competitive, obviously. Yeah, and I I keep yeah, I am. I want to win everything. All right, so am I filling out the dock or are you filling out the dock? I can fill it out. I'll put a little R's R's and M's next to everything. Man, that's smart. I would have just put her whole name. Okay, yeah. That's so R's I got this M's. guy. Uh so first game. <laughs> best AR slash VR game. <laughs> Our choices are Asgard's Wrath, yeah. Blood and Truth, Beat Saber, No Man's Sky, Trevor Saves the Universe. Uh, okay, so I don't know what the hell Asgard's Wrath is. Everything I don't know else... what Asgard's Wrath is either. So I'm, I'm going to say no on Asgard's nope, Wrath. Nope. Not, not enough people don't know, know what, what the it hell is. that is. Uh, do you know these other games at all? I do. I know Blood and Truth. I know Beat Saber. I know No Man's Sky. And I know Trevor Saves the Universe. Trevor Saves the Universe looks really like, looked like something I really wanted to play. I don't have VR, so I haven't played any of these games in VR. I can't really speak to them. I'm 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 going off, you know. I've played what the internet's been two saying. of them. Which ones? No Man's Sky in VR, and I played Beat Saber in VR. Um, is it Beat Saber? I feel like it's Beat Saber that's going to win. The this. winner is Beat Saber. Like it's been so huge and cool, <laughs> and like there's there's so many gifts and cool videos online of people playing Beat Saber. Remember that Asian the, chick who was like had a oh a yeah that bow staff awesome. that was so fucking cool. She put like the two move controllers in the end of it. Yeah, that thing was gnarly. That was nuts. So, but the the answer is Beat Saber. That I mean, that's one of like when I think of like PlayStation VR games that I've had, I've gotten to play Beat Saber is if it's not my favorite, it's certainly like my second or third period like out of all the years. Yeah. Um. Blood and Truth, I haven't played, but I heard really great things about. I have also heard pretty good things. I Tro, Trover Saves the Universe looked cool. Like, it looked really funny. And, you know, it was Rick, Rick it, and Morty it creator. It looks funny and goofy. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's going to be fine, but I don't think that's going to be, like... The one. The one, no. Uh, speaking of, I mean, you're you're hearing this a week after we recorded it, but what just got announced for us is freaking Alex, uh, Half-Life Alex. Yes. VR. That looks really cool. You sent me a video. 
I could care less about Half Life. It's just not something that yeah. uh, I've ever cared about. It's apparently gonna be as long as a Half Life game, like a regular, like as Half Life Two. It's gonna be like a full fledged like VR game. It looks like an awesome VR game. It's, it's yeah. cool, but I think the Half Life fans are gonna be upset because it's a VR game. But me not caring about that, I think yeah. it looks cool. I, if it comes to PlayStation at some point, I'd be willing to give it a shot. It's literally the um, only way I'm going to play this game. I'm not paying. I don't have a Vive or anything else, so let's hope that it comes to PlayStation. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'm not I'm not buying uh, freaking Oculus for this or anything for this. Oh, no, of course not. Um, if you were if you were to buy one I'm not, today, yeah. I'm just saying you're not going to. Yeah. If you were, you should get a Quest. Okay. What's it's completely a... wireless. You don't need a PC. Ooh. You need absolutely nothing outside Whoa. of the headset. And it works amazingly but can i play half-life on it uh i don't know we don't know uh <laughs> you probably know we don't know somebody out there knows uh the next one up here uh from the game awards is best strategy game uh we have age of wonders planetfall anno uh, 1800 fire emblems uh fire emblem three houses total war three kingdoms tropico six and war groove yep uh i'm super familiar with uh not super familiar with any of these i haven't played any of these games uh on 1800 a lot of people talked about war groove was that cool like advanced wars uh inspired game uh the one that stands out to me is fire emblem three houses the winner's fire emblem okay yeah so i mean that's gonna win i think because of uh just the fact that i mean it's got, not it's it not got, nominated like it's not for nominated game of the year. hardly anywhere else first of all yeah and it it's scored super high yeah like and on people, many websites and everything. Like if you, if you look at the Metacritic, I'm sure it's like probably close to 90 or like 89 People really or liked it, yeah. How come you didn't pick this up? Okay. I don't like strategy RPG games. Oh, really? No. I thought it looked a little too anime tropey for me. Oh, that's another. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm, it's not my gig. Fire Emblem used to be kind of cool. It used like to be kind of like uh, no, like Game Boy Dance and stuff. GameCube as well, Path of Game Radiance. Boy. Oh, okay. The it, Game, okay. It used to be like kind of cool war game, and it's really become like a waifu simulator. And I'm just kind of like, I don't know. But I hear it's I really good. I don't know what good. that means, but okay. Do you not know what a waifu is, I don't Matt? Fucking no. Now a waifu is your waifu. It's like your two D. Like your Wi Fi. No, no, no. It's like your 2D... Your wife that knows Kung Fu. No, no, no. Close. Closer. Because <laughs> there's some overlap there. It's like... It's your wife... It's your... Ana, it's your 2D, 2D anime wife who is your oh, waifu. So, weird. um, you know, my my waifu would be Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII. Re, uh, you know, remake, whatever. Final Fantasy VII. Um, who is your waifu, Matt? No. Who? What? What <laughs> fictional character who exists only within a two D world would be your waifu? I can't think of any. There's got to be a like Tomb Raider could be your waifu. Probably. Um, so I to- like Angelina Jolie. That's no, 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 no. Angelina Jolie's can't be your waifu. She's a human being. It needs to be like a polygonal character. No, that's not happening. Or a two D character. So what? Growing up, I what better things to do with my time? What character have you seen like as a woman? that you viewed as a woman, as a young boy, who, like, you know, really meant a lot to you. Who got, like, Claire Redfield, I own, like, Jill. most of Tomb Raider games. Okay. So probably Laura Like, Crawl. did you... Okay, here's a good question. This will, like... Not saying I would marry a goddamn 2D polygonal character. This will explain whether or not she's your waifu very easily. There's an easy way to do this. Uh, when you played Tomb Raider back in the day, you did not think this podcast was going to go this way, did no, you? No, I was not ready for any of this. Uh, when you played Tomb Raider back on the ps1 would you try and move the camera such that it would allow you to get a closer view of her buttocks or her breasts i don't remember doing that hmm. or you don't remember because you blocked it out and you don't want to talk about it or you don't remember <laughs> I just don't remember doing that do you, uh do you remember having I've never looked at like characters and thought oh that's sexy like in a lustful way never never <sighs> you're that's weird if they're not human <laughs> beings that's weird <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm only interested in humans. All right. So the next one is best sports slash racing game. Thank you. Let's just move on. <laughs> uh, we have CTR, Dirt Rally 2.0, Pro Evolution Soccer 2020, yeah. F1 2019, and FIFA 20. I just want to hear you say that you have a, a waifu is all I want to do. No? We move on. I, I don't even know of any. Like I can't even think of like any. like uh, Lara Croft. There you go. Lara Croft's your waifu? Yeah, sure. Okay. Now that you have a waifu, you oh, have to God. protect no, your waifu. No, there's no more questions. <laughs> that was the end of it. <laughs> Pick your sports or racing game. All right, cool. Uh, 
Uh, CTR was pretty well liked. Um, FIFA 20. I don't know. This is like, to me, the sports and racing game category is like a, a, a joke of a category. Yeah, it's, I think, look, CTR has a chance. Here's my problem with CTR, though. Yeah. It was supposed to be very difficult, which I think is going to keep a lot of people away from voting for it. Mm. Because if you don't know about the Keeleys, like it's like they're they're, they're voted on by uh, uh, like influencers and other people. It's like yeah. a panel of people, yeah. none of which are Jeff Keeley. Yeah. Um, none of which is me yeah, or we're us. Not, we're not, we're not part of it. Not, not yet. Not yet. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> subscribe to your YouTube. <laughs> Please subscribe. Uh, <laughs> you know, Dirt Rally 2.0, mm. I feel like it's just like Dirt was a thing in the past. It's come and gone. Uh, a lot of these outlets aren't going to play, you know, some of these games too. I mean, but yeah. they, you could also recuse yourself if you didn't, you know, oh, that's if cool. you don't feel like you, you, uh, you should vote on that category. You can choose to recuse yeah, yourself and not put down an answer. That's smart. Um, pro evolution, soccer, 2020, F1, 2019, FIFA 20. I mean, who's really playing these games? Honestly? The, no, I mean like, the, I mean, uh, FIFA and, and pro evolution more so than the, the racing games. Were there not enough racing games this year to like have two separate categories? There was, like, there was no Forza. If there was a Forza game this year, I mean, then it would there have, would be your winner. Win. I mean, need for speed. Heat just came out. We have, we have other games that came out. I'm sure. Like I, I find it hard to believe yeah, that this happened. is it. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't Thief, like. Or, I don't like that. Might have missed the cutoff though. Okay. Is that came, oh, did that come possible. out the same day as Star Wars? Because Star Wars missed the cutoff. Yeah, it did. No, it might have been a week before. Ah, uh, I don't remember. If if it came no, out, no, it was a week before. Okay, then it should it shouldn't have missed I the think cutoff it should have then. Been. Stupid. I, don't know. I yeah, I'm not a big fan of this. Uh, this like because sports and racing games are completely different like genres. Like, Thinking about the people who are voting though, I think it, the answer has to be like Pro Evolution is more of an obscure title than FIFA. I think FIFA is going to arrive above everything. Yeah. Maybe CCR. But again, I think that I think CTR was the most talked about game of, of the yeah, year probably. amongst like pri- like, you know, influencers who are more into hardcore games. FIFA, I don't think will win because FIFA comes out every year. Um, yeah, that's another thing that's hurting it. Maybe, maybe CTR is the answer then. I'm going to put that for mine, too. Yeah, uh, uh, you, you, you convinced me. CTR is probably the right answer. Cool. OK, so far, we're all all on the same page. Yep, no difference. Um, yet. Score and music. Score and music. Kate- uh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. Cadence of Hyrule, Death Stranding, Devil May Cry 5, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Sayonara, Wild Hearts. I've only played uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, Death Stranding, and heard a bit of Devil May Cry 5's uh, track, uh, OST. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm more familiar with... Uh, I, I didn't play Cadence of Hyrule. I know absolutely nothing about that. Yeah. Didn't play Kingdom Hearts. No, absolutely... Disney music. Big surprise. I'm guessing that's. I, there. I mean, there's that, but Yoko uh, Shimomura is like one of the standout like composers in like Japanese games and games in general. That's true. I didn't and think her, about that. They're her, probably using like orchestral music from dude, like Final Fantasy. Her stuff. original tracks are pretty awesome. That makes sense. Mm. Kingdom Hearts is awesome music, like original music specifically for the Kingdom Hearts series. That's not Final Fantasy. That's not Disney. It's pretty cool. It's tough for me to guess mm. just because I, I'm not I'm not that familiar. But out out of the, the little fin- familiarity that I know. Mm. I feel like it's Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> Pull my do- double trigger, bang, bang. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the double trigger, sh- trigger song bang, that I heard. Bang, bang. Um, for me, um, there's, there's a guy who like makes his own music based off video games called mm-hmm. Miracle of Sound. I'm sure many of you probably know who that is. Yeah. But uh, he did a, a song about Devil May Cry, and it was fantastic. Mm. It was just completely over the top. Yeah. And I know that's not in the game. I know that's not the soundtrack. But the soundtrack is over the top. Like, right. It, it, for sure. It off yeah. of that. So. Inspired by that. Um, I'm just going to go with that, I guess. Okay. I'll put you down for Devil May Cry 5. Um, Who will win? Let's see. Matt there. Uh, Death Stranding had a, has a really good soundtrack. Um, apart from like you know the licensed songs that are in there, I think it just has a really great. Yeah, are the licensed songs like they're counting that? I guess right. I would think so. Huh. I feel Death like Stranding might steal it just because of those songs. Then, but even apart from that, like I think Ludwig, whatever his name is, uh, the, the compositions, like the original compositions, and those are really good too. Like, so. Honestly, I and I don't know. Sanor, Wild Hearts, uh, and Cadence of Hyrule probably have great music as well. Um, yeah, I'm sure that they do. I just I haven't heard I haven't heard it, so that's it's yeah. hard. It's hard to guess, you know, on this because a lot of games people too. Like you know, I pay attention to like what's going on in the news. Yeah, and people don't usually talk about music, at least not on like big topics and like discussions and stuff. It's yeah. usually like an afterthought or in reviews when they're talking about exactly. Uh, I'm gonna give it to. Uh, I'm gonna give it to kingdom hearts three okay 
or Death Stranding. I'm, I'm stuck between these two. I'm going to give it to, I mean, we have uh, Kim Archley and RPG. I'm looking at that to see if something's going to beat it. I think something will. I'll give it to Kim Archley because I feel like they want to give it something at least, and that's probably going to be it. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good guess. I, I, I doubt Devil May Cry is going to be on everybody's mind, especially because it's from earlier this year. I just, yeah, I don't know. I heard that, song, that double trigger, is it called? Sorry. Double trigger. Yeah. It's a good song. Pull my double trigger. So there you go. That's what it gets. I see this world all around me. All right. Uh, Top RPG. Uh, RPG. Best RPG of the year. Disco uh-huh. Elysium. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy 15. Kingdom Hearts 3. Monster 14. Hunter World. Iceborne. The Outer Worlds. Final Fantasy 14. <laughs> 14, Matt. It's not Monster Hunter because it's a known <laughs> quantity. Okay. It's probably not Kingdom Hearts because I, I don't feel like people were like, oh my God, this is like. It's not a good RPG. This is like, oh my god, the, the Kingdom Hearts game, you know? I feel like still a lot of people think 2 is a better Kingdom Hearts game. I do. Um, so I'm not picking that. Uh, yeah. The Outer Worlds definitely came out with guns blazing. Same thing with... Uh, I had, again, I don't, you play Final Fantasy, so mm-hmm. uh, that expansion they put out is supposed to be Shadow absolutely Bringers amazing. Shadowbringers is one of the greatest Final Fantasy experiences I've had, period, full stop. Uh, I think what's going to hurt Final Fantasy XIV is you have to pay th- you have to play 300 hours, oh. m- like, minimum of, like, story before you can even get to Shadowbringers. I think a lot of people just haven't played it because of that. So I think it's disqualified because of that. Um, I would give it to Outer Worlds personally um so you're changing your guess no i mean what was i at before oh, i thought you picked final fantasy well when i was set up i think me i thought you said final fantasy. never mind oh yeah no no i wouldn't give it to that so you're going with outer worlds yeah yeah i think it, i think as an rpg goes it's the best rpg if you don't give it if you look at these five games and i, I haven't played disco elysium and i hear it's really great and yeah that's i heard probably... amazing things but I, I'm, I'm wondering how many people got around to exactly playing it or that's i think the know. problem if this was a more of a, a heady audience who is like picking these games and maybe disco elysium would make it in but uh i think uh, outer worlds is the one yeah i think i think the final fantasy 300 hour things is a huge problem yeah uh and that's gonna stop that from winning even though i heard good things Disco Elysium, mm-hmm. um, it, it can honestly pull away with it just because it's like the underdog, and it came in yeah. kind of late. It came in out what, a couple weeks ago, but it's so, kind of new. So did Outer Worlds. Outer Worlds came out like last month. Outer Worlds had, I think, Outer Worlds had one of the biggest bangs this year. Yeah, and I have to give it to that. And it's Obsidian. People love Obsidian. They view them as like the RPG masters, um, and they are. So yeah, okay, I'll put. You I'm with you that. on Outer Worlds. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Dis- Disco Elysium is a very close second, though. I'll be surprised if neither of them win. Yeah, if it goes to if it goes to Shadowbringers, I'll be happy. But I, I, I don't even I wouldn't give it to Shadowbringers for best RPG just because like the the time invested the time you have to invest is so ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ooh, best performance, Matt. Uh, so we have Ashley Birch as Pavardi Holcomb in Outer Worlds. Mm-hmm. We have Courtney Hope as Jesse Faden in Control. We have Laura Bailey as Kate Diaz in Gears Five. Mads Mikkelsen as Cliff in Death Stranding. Matthew Peretta as Dr. Casper Darling in Control. And we have Norman Reedus and his funky fetus as Sam Porter Bridges <laughs> in Christ. Death Stranding. Um, what do you think, Matt? I don't, Matt, you've only played like one of these games. Two. Oh, you played a bit of Death Stranding. So yeah. from what I've played, I, I Laura Bailey... From for Kate Diaz and Gears Five, Death Stranding. I've I've seen Mad Mickelson's perform a little bit. I've seen mm. Norman Reedus perform a little bit. Not not a lot. Uh, again, I don't have the background to pick. You know, my favorite. Again, I'm picking who I think is going to win. Yeah. Um. It's probably going to be Ashley Birch. You think so? Mm-hmm. As Pravardi. Yeah, I mean, she's great in the game. I think she's uh, she's one of my favorite parts of that game. Um, I do think because they have like performance as a whole in here, there's not a lot of performance that you see within Ashley Birch's character. It's all okay. VO. I haven't played it, so I'm not yeah. sure. I'm just guessing. Like you know, it's that game made such a bang, man. Uh, but yeah. Laura Bailey and as Kate Diaz is is probably my choice. Yeah, uh, my mine list. goes to uh, Matthew Peretta as Doctor Casper Darling. Who is? I didn't play control. He's in that game. You don't even see him as like a, a polygonal character. He's only in like uh, video logs, and it's like him, like a real, you know, him in a. It's like an FMV video. Okay. So you see him as a human being uh, acting out these, uh, you know, video logs, and he's silly. 
he's like irreverent and weird but also very endearing and uh, he has a whole arc that you like go through through these logs and they're really good um i don't think he's gonna win though which is unfortunate i feel like control might get shafted in this category and i think it's gonna go to a death stranding character and i think it'll go to mads mickelson even though i don't think uh i don't think that's right yeah, I mean, I, I don't see it going to a main actor. I feel like these these big actors are going to get snubbed yeah. because they're oh, really? in the video game genre. I do. I think people are going to be like, well, they're actors. And like, I know it's the performance over it. I don't know. I just feel like mm. the video game people aren't going to want like the main actors competing on the same level as like the video oh, game voice actors. Oh, that's possible. People might like view the fact that Mads Mikkelsen and like Norman Reedus are in these games as like pretentious, and they're like, get out of here. You're yeah, I, I think I, like some people, even subconsciously, may vote that way. So. Uh, you know, I'm going to go with Laura Bailey because she, she did a really good job as Kate Diaz. Okay. And I'm, I'm not really familiar with Ashley Stand- Birch. I just have I have yeah. a very good feeling that Ashley Birch is going to pull that out. Okay. Yeah. So you want to you want to put your vote in for uh, or your belief in uh, Laura Bailey? Yeah, I'll go with Laura Bailey. I, I really liked Gears 5. She did a great job mm-hmm. in it. So I do want to say I'm familiar with. I do want to say I feel like it, there, there are no like true undeniable standouts in this category. Last year we had uh, Arthur Morgan um for him, like there were him and the, the dude from god of war right those mm, were like the two ones that had like a big chance i think god of war was last the year before oh was it i think so no nah. because god of war beat red dead redemption for game of the year oh did it didn't it maybe <laughs> no because i feel like the guy presented the guy who uh says boy a lot from stargate like presented maybe. the award because he won it the year before i, I know that dude uh, the dude who played arthur morgan he was the one who won yeah and but he had so. he had at least one person that was like pretty stiff competition with him. I can see that. It was probably just Dutch from the same game. I don't remember. Um, best ongoing game, Matt. Did you want to take this one? Apex Legends. Uh-huh. Apex Legends. <laughs> Destiny Two. Final Fantasy Fourteen. Fortnite or Rainbow Six Siege. What's your uh, thoughts? Uh, hmm. Apex Legends, uh, as always, doesn't do as much as Fortnite, and that's okay. Uh, I think it's a better game regardless. Um, Destiny 2... I feel like Fortnite and Apex getting it, it just... I don't know. It, it sounds too obvious. Fortnite had that big Chapter 2 ridiculousness, though, that everyone freaked out about. So I feel like that alone might get it. Uh, I think Final Fantasy XIV should win this one because I think like they had so many improvements uh, with Shadowbringers, and it was like the best year of Final Fantasy XIV uh, ever for me. Um, so I think it should win, but I think it's going to go to Fortnite just because of that Chapter Two shit. Agreed. Yeah. Okay. All right, narrative. This would uh, be super tough for me. Narrative. <laughs> and play. I played Death Stranding. And that's the only one. On oh, this really? List. Okay. Uh, narrative. We have a Plague Tale Innocence. Uh, we have Control, Death Stranding, Disco Elysium. Fuck, I need to play Disco Elysium. Uh, and The Outer Worlds. Um, I have an answer. Go ahead. The Outer Worlds. Uh, that is a good answer, and I I don't think it's gonna get it, but I do think uh, that's a great answer. I think if they want to give it to a secondary thing, it it might it could man it could real, man this is a really tough one. This yeah. is just as bad as the performance category because all those people in the performance categories are amazing. Oh man, a Plague Tale is like known for its narrative. Disco that's, Elysium yeah. is supposed to have an awesome narrative as well. Mm, yeah. Um, <clears throat> this is a tough one. I don't. I'm gonna put my guns behind a Plague Tale Innocence because. The narrative was the was best the narrative for me. Yeah, and I like. You liked yeah. it more than Control and Death yeah. Stranding. Yeah, one hundred percent. And well, you played. You so you played a lot of these. I games. played a, a fair number of them. Uh, Plague Tale Innocence. You played all but Disco Elysium. Yep. Yeah, I haven't beat all of these games, but I have played um, close to all of them. That's cool. Uh, and Plague Tale Innocence. Uh, the perform. I'm I'm upset that uh, in performance we don't have any of the actors from Plague Tale Innocence because I think I think that's where your standout performances were in that game. Um, I feel like I'd get around to that game. Dude, that game is insanely good. I feel like I'd be more interested in that than... I'm definitely not... I'm never playing Disco Elysium. I have no interest in that game whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the other games I'd be willing to try on that list. I mean, this is the only category that Plague Tale Innocence is uh, nominated for, too. 
Um, so that's another thing that I, like, I, you know, I feel like might give it the edge if all these people are looking at all these categories and they're like, oh, that's the only time Plague Innocence, Plague Tale Innocence is in here. Um, but it's possible. I, I just feel that the outer worlds, like the choices that I heard that people can make and how things like, yeah. you, you can be just, you can be a super passive character yep. in that. And like, you can, you can manipulate people instead it's of actually cool. having to use combat. It's I think cool. that is why it wins mm-hmm. narrative yeah. over the other ones. Uh, I could see it. I could definitely see it. Um, I'm like, I don't hundred percent believe in Plague Tale Innocence because I, I don't believe into in the uh the industry people like making the votes or casting their votes but But i I want to believe you said earlier though like if they're going to give something to plague tale that's it's it's their only chance yeah that that, that makes sense uh best multiplayer game map um we have apex legends borderlands 3 call of duty modern warfare tetris 99 yep and division 2 bum 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 I mean, if this was a fair list, it's probably Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Uh-huh. Uh, but when they're also speaking of multiplayer. Yeah. Like the multiplayer in Call, Call of Duty is great. There is a couple shitty maps, though, and there's some spawn trapping. Those things mm. could keep it away if you were looking at it from a critical eye, but I don't even feel like most people do. I think just like when you brought up with FIFA, another FIFA, there okay. people are going to go another Call of Duty. Do the same thing with this. Uh, which isn't fair because I think Call of Duty this year is, is spectacular. Yeah. Um, but my guess is Borderlands 3. Okay, interesting. Um, Just for the multiplayer, like going through the story together sort of thing. I was actually going to go with Modern Warfare. I hope it's Modern Warfare. I think Modern Warfare okay. deserves it. For sure. Um, uh, It's not going to be... Apex isn't going to win anything. Because they, they did a long time where they weren't doing updates and stuff. Nobody's talking about Apex. Tetris 99 had a pop, but it was a very like... Wait, did Apex come out this year? Yeah. It was in like March. Oh, I thought it was in here just because it was like a uh, an ongoing game, but I no, I think it. it came out this year, dude. Dang. Um, I'm actually gonna give it to Apex. I think. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think it came out this year. No, it did. It did because it's it's up there as a game of the year as well. I think. Um, shit, that's crazy. I I think Apex is the best multiplayer game of the year personally i like it a lot i didn't play it but i really love call of duty um dang yeah i can go apex or call of duty for me uh tetris 99 was also very fun did you mess with that at all no i have it mm. but i haven't played it and i think that like tetris 99 and the division on the same level there was a pop even apex to an extent yeah it was a big pop with a- apex but it died out, you know, like a month later, people were talking less and less about Apex. Yeah, after EA Tetris stopped paying the influencers to play it. <laughs> Tetris 99 was like a two-week event and nobody talked about it anymore. Division 2 yeah, was like two to three weeks and nobody talked about it anymore. Those games are going to get overlooked mm-hmm. without a doubt. It's probably going to be Borderlands 3 or Call of Duty. Man, I'm having trouble. That's my opinion. I hope. It, I really hope it's Call of Duty. I just feel like it's going to get snubbed because it has Call of Duty in the title. I'm going to say they'll pick Call of Duty. Although I think Apex Legends is like the one. And Borderlands Three is very fun. I did. I didn't. I didn't get to play that multiplayer because I prefer playing that game by myself. But I enjoyed Borderlands Three. You uh, okay? That's weird. <laughs> you prefer playing that uh, Borderlands by yourself? Excuse me, by yourself. I I don't like playing games with other people. They <laughs> they just annoy me. Okay, that's fair. I try to play as many games as possible. I just feel like myself. that game like lives and thrives on like the multiplayer and the co op. I've never played a Borderlands game with somebody else. All the Borderlands games that I've played have been by myself. And you, I've been totally you were, fine in that you world. finished the first Borderlands by yourself, yes. and it wasn't insufferable. I beat for you. the first Borderlands by what myself. What is wrong? How I enjoyed, I played the shit out of that game, and the second one you I weren't bored. You weren't bo- bored by the fact that like there was no NPCs anywhere, and it was just like a desolate landscape. Give me them guns, Richard. All right, all right. All right. All right. These weapons are my religion. Uh, <laughs> don't how dare you? Don't use <laughs> my favorite quote of the year against me. Uh, best independent game. Uh, you want to go through these? Baba is You, Disco Elysium, Katana Zero, Outer Wilds, not Worlds, Untitled Goose Game. Uh, the meme, the power of memes is with uh, Untitled Goose Game. Indeed it is. That is the most memeable. I think it's going to be Outer Wilds. I every, Not everyone I know has played Outer Wilds, and it doesn't seem like a lot of people like jumped in on it, probably because of Game Pass thing. But everyone I know who has played Outer Wilds speaks very highly of it. Yep. Um, I think it's a good call. So I, I'm going to go with that. Okay. Um, what would I want to win is Katana Zero. I haven't pulled the game yet. I'm hoping that they make a physical copy of it. So I've been holding out from buying it. But it basically mm. is like a Ninja Gaiden-esque 
Uh, oh yeah, I saw this one. Oh yeah, I need to pick this game up. I I can't wait to play it, and uh, hopefully, yeah, this game does look awesome. I've been I've been I've been holding out for a long time. Like this came out, I think, in the beginning of the year. I want to say it came out around March. Mm. And I've been trying to wait, like hopefully, like limited run or somebody puts out a physical copy. Yeah. I've yet to see anything, so I'm I'm getting close to just buying the damn thing. Yeah. Um. So I I would want that game to win just because it's going to appeal more to me. Mm. But that game is not going to win. My guess is it's between two of these, which is Disco Elysium and Outer Wilds, and I'm going to go mm. Disco Elysium. Cool, I like that. I Man, I uh, just seeing that name come up a bunch of times has, has me really excited. Oh, to, people were to raving about this thing, man. So yeah, those are uh, big indies that I need to play uh, from this year are Outer Wilds and Disco Elysium. So. Here's another reason mm. why I picked Disco Elysium. Yeah. Everybody I heard talk about Disco Elysium said it was fantastic. Yeah. And Outer Wilds was like, people, it was like, it was people's game of the year, or mm-hmm. people were like, eh. Uh, okay some like, people were kind of cold on it yeah exactly man all right i like I, the thing i like about going through like game of the war game of the year awards lists is you get to kind of like see things that like you miss because they come up so often you're like oh okay maybe i do need to check out you yeah know, if you like rpgs games. disco elysium is supposed to be like a thing i mean i'm never gonna play that game not in a, min- not in a million years i'm not even closely interested in playing i it. think it's very much for me though like my kind of game oh yeah you'd probably love that shit uh what the fuck is games for impact what does that mean Games for Impact. So this is something that's like, I think, more like games that are made like for the positive. I'll give you an exact example in a second when I look it up here. Okay. Um, well, I'll read off the things while you're doing that. Uh, for Games for Impact, we have Concrete Genie. We have Grease, which is a very cool game. Uh, kind Words, Life is Strange 2, and Sea of Solitude. Um, what do you see there, Matt, for Games for... Uh, it's loading over there. Um... Of these games, Greece looked really cool. These all look like kind of poopy games, though. I think it's pronounced Gree. Really? I believe so. Well, that's how the wine is pronounced. Pinot Gris. But I think this game is called Greece. Sure. Like greasy hands. So here's what Game for Impact means. Please. It's for a thought thought-provoking game with a pro social meaning or message. Where's, kind of a bullshit category. Where's Death Stranding in this? But uh you know, that's a good question. This is like a Death Stranding game. <laughs> It kind of is. Yeah, what the hell? Uh, okay, so positive message. Uh, so you had Concrete Genie, Gree, Kind Words, yeah. Life is Strange 2, Sea of Solitude. I'm looking up Kind Words to see what the hell that is. Kind Words is a game uh, where you basically write like a letter and you're supposed to like write something positive yeah. and other people are connected to the internet with you and they'll like respond to your letter. Or if you like, you know, you're... Uh, you're like you, you're like outreaching to the community, telling them like you're down. Somebody's supposed to like write you back and write you like a, a kind letter. It's supposed to bring up positivity. Uh, okay. Uh, this and make you feel good. Okay. Okay. That this that sounds exactly what this category is. <laughs> it just feels like <laughs> they made the category for this game. Yeah. That uh, or Concrete Genie. <laughs> if we're talking about like best game though, right? Kind words is like it's an interesting idea, but it doesn't sound very much. Doesn't like sound game. like it's a it's a gamey game. Yeah. Gree is probably I heard good things about Gree. Life is Strange 2 is like the the bastard child of Life is Strange that no one ever talks about. Yeah, um, it kind of fell off immediately. You know why? It sucks. I didn't play it. I'm not going to judge it. Yeah. Um they don't have the the two girls oh, uh, um Chloe and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Neither of them are in that game and I'm sorry Life is Strange isn't popular because you put the the title Life is Strange in it. Chloe and you Max. made those characters. Yeah. yeah. Chloe and Max were interesting characters and they're not in there. Yeah. So this is the result that you're going to get. So Life is Strange 2 just like its sales are going to be overlooked. Sea of Solitude, haven't heard any pop about that game. No. Kind Words was like a, you know, a thing I'm going to say it's Concrete Genie that gets the nod. Yeah, I respect that. I'm going to stick Gree with... is very close second. I'm going to stick with uh, Kind Words because it just feels it just feels like the, exactly what a game is for impact is. So No, I'm know. changing mine. What are you changing it to? Gree. Okay, cool. I think Concrete Genie is not going to be looked at the same way. Okay. I, not that it was a bad game or anything, but I feel like it would ha- had kind of mixed reviews where most people that played Gree uh, seemed to like it. Very yeah. positive yeah, 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 that's so I'm going to say Gree. Uh, next one is game direction. Matt, can you bring up what exactly game direction is? If you would be so kind. Game direction, a word for an outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Okay. Okay. So we have a control death stranding resident evil Two, Sekiro shadows die twice and outer wilds. Read that to me one more time. Awarded for outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. Okay. 
that's very funny because Resident Evil 2 is on here and that's like a, a a remake that actually has a lot of the old I mean I guess they you know so it's a reimagining of that game sure yeah so I mean there, there does have to be some you know some vision know. happening to reimagine that game yeah yeah but I mean when you have stuff like Death Stranding and Control next to it I don't know um I think I know who I want to... I know who I don't want to win this, or who who shouldn't win it, and who I don't think is going to win. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. That one I don't think is did enough differently, uh, even though it did some... I mean, it did... Outer Wilds isn't going to win. That one as well, and then Resident Evil 2, I think, are not going to be included. I really... I honestly think this is a, a category built to let Death Stranding win, because I don't <laughs> think Death Stranding is getting Game of the Year. I don't think like oh, I think man. it pissed off too many people. I don't think it's going to happen. But I think this is here just to like give Death Stranding a chance at getting this game has four out of the five games here are for game of the year as well. And the only one that isn't is Outer Wilds, which is per- replaced by Outer Worlds, which is weird. Um, so I think it's going to Death Stranding. Sekiro is going to get overlooked. I didn't play Sekiro, so I can't talk speak to its direction. Like it came out it's just, too long. It ago. came out too long ago. Yeah. People are it's not going to be on the tip of their tongues. I, I believe it or not even though it's a remake resident evil 2 really stands a chance in this category because yeah. they really revamped the series in a whole new way okay um so many people that you know that explain like how it feels it's like this is like you know a, like basically a reimagining and built from the ground up you know the it's structure cool. of the game is there yeah but it's like totally different yeah i think it stands a chance but then you start comparing it to Control and Death Stranding. I think though that's where those two games really shine. Yeah, is going to be the direction that they were given. Um, I know a little bit less about Control, so I'm going to give it to Death Stranding. Okay, okay, just cool. because I feel like Death Stranding is like you're kind of right that that's probably where it's going to win. I don't think yeah. it's going to get Game of the Year. I don't think it I should think get Game of the Year. It's going to get something. Yeah. this is probably what it's going to get. Yeah, and they'll make a big deal out of it. They'll make it seem like it's just as good as a uh, game of the year as right. well. Right, and then they're also you know giving it to Kojima because it's game direction. Yeah, you know, it's almost exactly because like he's a, yeah exactly like he, he, him being such a big director. Right. Um. That said, yeah, I do want to give uh, Control a big shout out for like its direction and stuff and like what it did, um, how it built a really cool Metroidvania world and it used a um this small Control this, was Metroidvania. Yeah, to an extent. Yeah, it has some Metroidvania. Dude, you control. need to play... Control is my game of the year by far and away. Um, all right, next we have Fresh Indie Game, um, which is a new indie studio... Debuting its oh, first debu- game oh, this year. Oh, that's cool. Oh, it's going to be Disco Elysium. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Z-A-U-M for Disco Elysium. Zomad Studio for Greece. Dead Toast Entertainment for My, my Friend is Pedro. Oh shit, Mobius Digital for Outer Wilds. It could be that too. Uh, Mega Crit for Slay the Spire and a House House for Untitled Goose Game. Ooh, interesting. There's some bangers on there. Yeah. The, again, that going back to the, the, the divisiveness that Outer Wilds had, I heard you know some things. I'm not giving it to that just for that reason. Okay. Slay the Spire, I've heard nothing but good things about. Untitled Goose Games, like you said earlier, seems to be a meme. I don't think it's going to win. Um but if, if if Untitled Goose Game wins anything, it's probably this category. Mm-hmm. Slay the Spire is supposed to be an absolutely amazing game, but it's a card-based, I think, role-playing game or something. So I think very few yeah, people no, are going to no, play no. it because no, no. of that. That's going to limit Slay the Spire. It's going to be D- Disco Elysium, probably. I think so, too. I was going to say the same. Uh, actually, no. I'm going to go with Outer Wilds. Um, so okay. I'll put you down for that. Uh I don't know. I I just feel it's like a tough one. Like Outer Wilds, Goose Game can just win this shit because people were like, "Oh, Goose Game." Oh, uh, it was so it was funny. Such a thing, Hong know? Kong, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> Outer Wilds, just I I was sure that Outer Wilds was made by like a you know established indie studio. I didn't think it was uh, their first game, so I was just surprised to see that. Same thing with Disco Elysium. Um, My friend is Pedro. Gosh. I heard good things about too. I just I'm not familiar with the game. It's a so. side scrolling like shooter. Like it it looks cool. It's very clever. It's got very funny like Deadpool level humor. But uh, I I just think there's so there's much better indie yeah, games. That Outer Wilds is going to surpass that. Yeah. I think. And so we'll just go it, even Slay the Spire. I would say honestly, if Slay the Spire didn't have a card game in it, that's kind of limiting its audience. Like it's supposed to be an amazing game. Yeah. Uh, did you want to take the next one? Yeah, fighting game. We got uh, Dead or Alive 6, Jump Force, MK11, Samurai Showdown, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. So this is a fighting game for 2019. And yes, Smash Bros. came out in 2018, but it missed the cutoff so it's for back these in awards. Here. So um, now it gets to go in this year. 
Yeah, this is a this is a we. Uh, why is Jump Force on this list? That game is garbage. I feel like they were just, Dead or Alive didn't get good reviews either. I think they just had to throw some extra things on here. There to has to be category. literally any other fighting game that came out this uh, year. There was probably indie games you could have put on here. That indie would games. Be better than I'm Jump sure there's Force. some Japanese ga- games that got overlooked. Like how, how the fuck did Jump Force? That game is it got garbage. Very me- mediocre reviews. I think most of the reviews I read for that were like you know sixes and fives out of ten. It's a trash stuff. game. Like, it's, it's a like, trash fire of a game. It's disgusting looking. It doesn't play. It's not a good game. Um, I'm gonna give this to Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Although Samurai Showdown is a beautiful looking game, it's too small of a game. Samurai that's, Showdown yeah. got good reviews too. Um, I bet that's the best fighting game on here. I wouldn't be surprised, but I think it's gonna go to Smash Brothers. It's hard for me to say. I'm only between two. It's Smash Brothers or MK11. Yeah, MK11 can do it too. MK11, you know, is one of the best selling games this year. Um, and I'm wondering if Smash Brothers coming out so late last year, yeah. if that's going to actually affect it from having a chance to win. Like people are like, oh, that's a last I year. I think game. it might kind of help because they're like, oh yeah, I didn't get to vote for this last year. It, it's Let's possible. I mean, look, I want to go Mortal Kombat 11 because mm-hmm. I feel like that's like just the default answer when you look at this list. But when you think about it more, they have more Smash Brothers characters in this than any other thing. Yeah, they need to honor you know what, what they've done with with Smash. Mm-hmm. And not to say that Mortal Kombat wasn't good. Mortal Kombat supposed to be one of the best Mortal Kombat games ever made. Eleven. Um, yeah, so, like even the story is supposed to be fantastic. Maybe it'll be that. Um, I can see it. I, I'm gonna go with Smash Brothers though. Okay. I just, I just feel like you can't deny the power that Smash Brothers has. Uh, we're never gonna get Smash Brothers like this again. As no, well. this is never gonna. Ha- you better enjoy it. Yeah. and play it for the next twenty years because it's not gonna. This happen is it. You're, you're never gonna have this many characters in a Smash Brothers. Smash Brothers. They're never gonna bring every character back. I wait till the next one. Mm-hmm. Can you can you imagine the kids that are out there yeah. flipping out about this Pokemon nonsense that's going on? What is gonna happen when they don't have all the characters in Smash? Uh, can you imagine the barrage of bullshit that Nintendo's gonna have to deal with? As one of those children who were complaining about <laughs> like, Pokemon getting like a bunch of Pokemon cut, uh, they're gonna be fine. Um, because I think Sakurai, Sakurai is a very competent developer. I think his team is very competent. Is he going to keep doing... I think this is his... Fun, I think this is his... I'm done. Enjoy everything that it's I've possible. done. It's possible. It's possible. Give it to somebody else to deal with. Whatever the case, I think the next Smash Brothers is going to be a completely different kind of game. I think we'll be able... be We'll even be able to classify it as like a as something other than a fighting game as like an adventure so. game i think they're gonna they're gonna cut a bunch of obviously they're gonna cut a bunch of people i wouldn't be surprised if it it's like an action adventure game where you get to choose between characters and uh and, and go through on like adventures with them and it has like its own story i think it's gonna be a very very different type uh, I, type of title i don't believe so because i think that they're so involved with things like evo now and mm. it's really elevated smash brothers to another okay. level okay that you're dissecting that community I see. up so poorly if, if you do do that what if okay you're gonna you're gonna remove an entire section of that community that's just gonna be totally against it what if you just keep adding shit to super smash brothers ultimate that's their best bet yeah. Honestly, if they if they if they could somehow manage the logistics of not like if they make a switch like two or whatever they call mm-hmm. their next system. Yeah. If they can convince all those companies like, hey, we're just porting it. We're yeah. not making a new game. We're just we just need the license over. for your character. Yeah. That's their best bet. Yeah. I think and then you just keep adding new characters and stuff. Just keep and that stages going. and stuff. That is their best bet to to do that for like twenty years and then they can worry about that, you know, when the Switch four comes yeah. out. Because I I think if you're you're making a new Smash Brothers, like you can't you can't say, Hey, we're not gonna have all the characters now. And it's also the same kind of game. It's like, but I had all the like, why they're gonna have they're gonna have a huge problem on their on their hands after doing this. So you that, need to you, know. you need to change. You need to do what Pokemon should have done since they were cutting uh, a bunch of Pokemon. You need to completely change how that game looks, how it plays, revitalize it in a in a big way. And I think that's what we're. I'm actually really excited to see what happens with Smash Brothers going forward. Um. Anyway, uh, best family game. We have a uh, Luigi's Mansion. Some call this the made for Nintendo. This is category. the it's only Nintendo games. <laughs> Legitimately, uh, this it, year it's only it. Nintendo game. Uh, Luigi's <laughs> Mansion, Ring Fit Adventure, Super Super Mario Maker Two, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, and Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, this is either going to Luigi's Mansion or Super Mario Maker Two. I think Mario Maker Two is a, a much bigger hit, so I'm going to give it to that. Matt, the answer is Smash Brothers. Really. Yeah. For best family, it's going to get in other that category. It doesn't matter. All right, interesting. 
I think it, Smash Brothers, my second answer is Luigi's Mansion, because Mario Maker actually kind of flopped for Nintendo. They made money on the game, but did not reach their expectations whatsoever. Yeah, but people, like, love it. They love to stream. And these are people who are, like, the people picking these games are people who stream games, who, like, make content. This is what happened, though. Yeah. Mario Maker came out, it had a pop, and it went away. It was the same thing with Division. Mm. It was big for about three weeks, and then no one talked about it anymore. Interesting. I Luigi's see it, Mansion, people are still talking about that But game. it just came out, is why. It's but it's hot now, right now, though. yeah, it might be. Uh, but uh, again, but I, also I you gave it a Smash, Brothers. yeah. So. Still Smash Brothers. Uh, best audio design, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare, we have Control, we have Death Stranding, we have Gears 5, Resident Evil 2, and Sekiro, for some reason, is on here for audio design. Anyway, uh, um, I'm going to give it either. I think Resident Evil 2, obviously, being a horror game, has a big, um, just a big boon because of that. A big uh, big advantage over all these other games. That makes sense. Um, and it has great sound design. Uh, but I'm going to give it to Control. I think Control is going to surprise. Sound design in that game was really great. I played it with headphones and refused to play it any other way once I did because it, it was that good. Um, you know, the constant hearing of, of, of things in the background, like all the weird creepy noises and stuff. Like it worked really well. The sound of your gun sounds awesome. Levitating something and the whoosh as you throw it sounds fucking sick. And I think people are going to respect the game for that and give it to Control. I think if Control wins, I'm not, I'm not saying their sound was... That's a bad thing. I'm not going to say that. Mm. I was going to say they're going to win because they, they needed to give it something and this might be it. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, that but might I feel be like that's happens. taking away from like the, the audio engineers and mm. stuff like that. So it might, it might be really good. I haven't I haven't played it myself, so I don't know. Um, I, I What you said about Resident Evil 2, though, I 100% yeah. agree with. Yeah. It has a real good chance. Yep. But... I feel I still think it's going to get overlooked. I think it's going to Resident Evil 2 is going to get overlooked in every category. You think so? The same way Spider-Man 2 did last year. Mm. Spider-Man. Or Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Sorry, Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 is out. Yeah. Spider-Man. <laughs> I got to go right now. I don't think Spider-Man 2 won like anything yeah. last year. Um because there was all, you know, God really? of War and Red Dead Redemption. Red Dead came Redemption. Out, like, God of War did not come out last year. Really? I don't let me look it up cuz this is going to be ridiculous if we don't if we keep mentioning it. God of War. I'm almost positive it did though. Uh, April 2018. There you go. Dang, there you go. Last year. So everything last year was God of War and Red Dead. Yeah, for sure. They were cleaning. Red Dead was cleaning Dude, house. last year was a fucking this year is not show. even close to as good as last year. It was a good year though. I'm not saying it was a bad video year. Video games right now are the best they've ever. Yeah, they been, are. Dude. Like they're fucking awesome. I love video games. Um, um okay, who are you gonna give it to though? The answer is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Oh, really? Yeah, they have an excellent design in that game audio-wise. Like, they spent a lot of time developing the audio on that game. Uh, everything sounds fantastic. The, the 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 way you have to capture sounds for like war and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Control might have great d- design too. I don't know, but I I think it's Call of Duty. I think this is where it gets something. Um, this next uh next one is art direction. We have a uh, Control. We have Death Stranding, we have Grease, we have Sayonara Wild Hearts, we have Sekiro, and we have Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. At this point, I feel like Keeley was just putting Death Stranding wherever he could to give his friend a chance to win. Well, he didn't get to pick these. These were voted on by other people. Oh, he wait, has were no they? involvement. Really? The, yeah, he has no involvement other than producing the show. So we think. <laughs> so we're told. <laughs> so we're told. Um this is this category I think is either for Sayonara, Wild Hearts, or Greece. Most certainly an indie game. You can get the major ones off of this. This is not for them. Yeah. Uh I'm trying to remember what those two games look like. I kind of remember what Greece looks like, but I'm having a tough time remembering what Sayonara Wild Hearts looks like. Uh look it up. Look it up. Yeah, I can look at it up real quick. That's a good idea. Uh I yeah, I'm I, I just looked at uh I think Greece. Man, Greece has really good art direction, but it also does look a little bit plain. Um, Sayonara Wild Hearts looks, uh, it's got more color to it, but it's also very... Um, I'm going with Greece. Yeah, I think Yeah, I think that's the right choice too, because I think uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts kind of just like is obvious. It's just neon. It's basically what Nerdthusiast's logo is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> Which I asked for. That's not an insult to the artist who made that. Thank you very much, Bernardo. Um, but... Like it's it's not as inspired. Greece has a lot of like really cool striking imagery, and uh, yeah, I think I'll give it to Greece as well. Perfect. 
Action adventure games. We have Borderlands 3, Control, Death Stranding, mm-hmm. Resident Evil 2, Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice. Now this is where the <laughs> This is where the, the game awards are weird. I think it's weird which is about everybody. What do you, what is action adventure? What is an action game? Like what, oh. what like how do you put these things in here? Cuz there's some on this list that you're going to see uh on the action game thing, like well, what the what the fuck is the difference from mm. one game being on one and, and one game being on the other? Uh, I have a problem with first person shooters being an action adventure game. I have a, Why isn't there a, sh- a shooter category? Like mm. uh, there used to be, but this is what it. This they change now. it. They change it. I feel like if there's not enough shooters, they'll like just throw it in. They need to define these things yeah. better. And if anybody's going to come up with a way of defining these, it should be the game awards. No. I, I think so. I, I there's a, isn't there like another uh, actually like good game awards that happens in the year? I mean, each <laughs> site and everything has like their own I- individual there's like, things. But I feel like Jeff Keighley has done a really good job of getting this to be known as like this is the closest thing you're going to get to the Oscars or the Game Awards. So they they should they should really flush this out more. Thinking, honestly, okay, I guess so. I'm thinking of a different no because I I don't get Oscars vibes from this. There's too much like this is trailers the closest and shit. thing to that though. There's a there's like a uh uh an, another one like an industry ran one. Oh, the That's Dice like, Awards. I think it's the Dice Awards. What I'm the Dice of. Awards are is from developers like voting with other yeah, developers. Yeah, I think so that can't be considered because they're well, developers no. voting with developers. There's but no think, outside panel. I think that's a I better think it's choice. Fair way. I think it's a better choice than having like because the the, ind- the people you pick from the industry are fucking they're enthusiasts. They're not even journalists. They're not even like uh, some of them aren't even critics. Oh, sorry. I mean that's who we are. I mean that's who we are. So I'm I'm saying if <laughs> Fine. like. I <laughs> those if, opinions matter. If Nerthusias got big enough, then people like me and Matt would possibly be influencing this. And I don't like. I would recu- I'd be recusing myself <laughs> in like every category because you know, at least this year I wouldn't. And I haven't played any of these games, so see the problem. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, re- regarding that, I think there's. I, I don't expect that much out of the game awards. Also, oh, if I, if I if we were ever invited on a panel like this, I would take the time to play all these games and really have an understanding of what they are. Otherwise, I would recuse. Myself. I mean, by then like, we'd be able to like if we were that big, we would probably we would probably be doing Nerdthusiast full time, so we'd have the time to play these games. So. Only you can make it happen. Yeah, we'll have a Patreon at some point. It's in the works. Uh, let's but see. Anyways, action action slash action. Oh my god, action slash adventure game. Borderlands Three, Control, Death Stranding, Resident Evil Two. Legend of Zelda: Link's Awakening and Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. I, I I understand what an action adventure game is to me. Like to me, it's just like it's generally a third person shooter or a third person game where you're on an op- some type of adventure, a la Zelda, a la you know Mario. Um, there can be some fighting, some punching, stuff like that. Like I would definitely consider Jedi Fallen Order action adventure game. Like that's what it is to me. I have a problem with it. It's a, it's a very loose and vague genre for sure. And a lot of games fall into it. Um, you're a little younger than me. So I have, mm -hmm. I have a bigger problem with that because adventure games to me mean something different. Okay. Adventure games are like the point and click adventure games that were made by, you know, like Lucas, like Lucas Arts. But an action adventure game. Yeah, but now you're. The words need to get straightened out. Someone needs to fix this. And Jeff Keeley, please just fix this for the love of God. Fix this. Uh, I think this is Sekiro's. I think this is the one that Sekiro gets. I feel like Sekiro might get snubbed. You think so? Yeah, I feel like this is probably. Resident Evil 2. Okay, cool. That's what I'm going with. See, but like to me, Resident Evil 2 is more of a uh, survival horror game. Like that's what genre. I would but there's in. no genre. There's no spot for that. No. This is what you get, Richard. So yeah, action adventure just gets. This like, is my oh. problem with this. This needs to get sorted out. But when not enough games, I mean, enough games come out every year. You can enough some, games definitely do. You can put some enough indie, people aren't going to play them. Is the problem? You can put some indie games. Well, you know what? Like the people who are on these panels, that's this is what they do. This they is their job. They, all they do is play, play video them. games, that's so they true. should be able to. They don't have full-time That's jobs uh, apart from the full-time job of playing games. Uh, next game is action game. Now I have an issue. Now I have a problem with these <laughs> genres because how the fuck are you going to have an action? <laughs> well, I don't know what the difference between action adventure and action game is. There, there, there's, there's, look, to me, an action game is Astral Chain, which is on this list. Okay. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But then Call of Duty's on this list, which is a first-person shooter. <laughs> And then Gears of War is on the list, which is a third-person shooter. Devil May Cry 5. Okay, so like uh, Bayonetta and Devil May Cry S games. Astral Chain makes sense. Devil May Cry makes sense. Right. Gears 5 doesn't make sense. Call of Duty doesn't make sense. Apex, Apex Legends doesn't, make, doesn't sense. make sense. And neither does Metro Exodus. 
Um, why isn't there a shooter category? This is so weird. Yeah, why isn't there a shooter a first person? It doesn't shooter make category? any goddamn sense. It's fucking dumb. And not only that, not only there should be there be a shooter car- category. Mm-hmm. Borderlands Three needs to get moved down to that shooter category. Yeah, it's an action adventure. Yeah, game. it's so silly. This is yeah. This is these last uh, two before game of the year action adventure game and action game are weird. Weird. Yeah, Mr. Keely, you ask right. for feedback constantly, and I know you always listen. So yeah, he's here. He's listening. To I us. know that. I know that we're big enough where you're listening to us. I know Please we're. Fix this. I know you and Matt have a very long personal relationship, uh, akin to you and Kojima. Exactly. And we're on the I same level yeah, as Kojima. Exactly. Uh, I'll give this to Devil May Cry Five. I think Astral Chain Ooh. was kind of disappointing for me. That's and... kind of surprising, but yeah, I think this is probably a good call. Um, if you were a... disappointed in Astral Chain, you said not disappointed. I just. I stopped playing it. I uh, I played a few hours and I'm like, this is pretty good. I'll come back to it. And then I just didn't. I will eventually, I think. But uh, it didn't stand out as much as I hoped it would. Um, combat's a little bit weird and takes some getting used to, which isn't bad. It's not bad combat. Um, and yeah, it just it didn't stand out the way I hoped it was going to. It was it's missing something. Whereas, yeah. And it's funny because I haven't even played Devil May Cry five. But it just looks more complete. Right, yeah, that's more... why we're just doing predictions. Exactly. But I, I and I think uh, I think people like Devil May Cry Five more than Astral Chain. It reviewed very well. Yeah. So I think it'll, it'll go to that. I am in between. Um, well, let me just say what I think. Gear, I, I did play Gears Five. I thought it was a great game. I just feel like with Call of Duty, it's going to get snubbed because people are going to look at it like, oh, it was another Gears game. That's most likely what is going to occur, in my opinion. Um. I feel like Gears should stand a real good chance at this game, though, or this uh, category, though. Okay. Um, the only competition it truly has is Call of Duty and Devil May Cry. But again, Call of Duty and Gears are the same situation where people are, you know, I don't think people are going to vote for them because of the name. Action game. They're going to see action game. Like, right. No, that goes to Devil May Cry or Astro Train. And it's probably going to be Devil May Cry. Okay. Um, I think you're right. I agree. It, it, maybe Apex pulls this out somehow. That'd be weird. But I... I feel like it was such a thing that came and gone. I, I think so. Gears would be my choice, but I think Devil May Cry is probably going to get it. Okay. And last but not least, Matt, game of the year. Uh, we have Control. We have Death Stranding. We have Resident Evil Two. Uh, Sekiro: Shadows Die Twice. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate from last year, and The Outer Worlds. Yes, sir. This is a this is an interesting list. I think it does a pretty good job. What do you think of this game of the year list? Do you think there's any snubs? First off, like something that should be on here that's yeah. not on here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really a personal game. Bloodstain is not on there. Bloodstain isn't on here at all. No, it's not. Which is ridiculous. whoa, and that's your game of the year right now. As it stands. Probably so far. Matt has not I played. To, I had to really think about it, but that's sure. Bloodstained I really, really liked. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. I uh, Control's my game of the year, so I'm happy it's on here. I don't think it's going to win. Wait, how come Bloodstained wasn't in the action adventure category? I mean, Resident Evil 2 is on the same list with Borderlands and them. Like... Yeah. Get rid of Borderlands 3 and put in Bloodstained. Yeah. Move, move Borderlands 3 to action game because clearly that's more shooters in there. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> stupid, stupid. So Blood you're, you're right. Is I I didn't think it was stupid, but now I do. So <laughs> Bloodstained is one I can think of off the top of my head that I yeah. feel like should be, you know, at least in the conversation. You know, if there was a top ten list and Bloodstained wasn't on there, I'd have a super serious problem with that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. But it's just these uh these six. Um, Devil I'm, May Cry. Uh, so it's kind of surprising because I again I heard that game was absolutely fantastic i honestly think the reason it's not in here is because resident evil 2 is and they're like one capcom game yeah maybe you know that's what it feels like smash had to be on here because it wasn't last year because last year didn't count for smash yeah and i think it deserves to be on here if it, if it got snubbed last year then i think it should be able to, to i feel like this is where it. smash Brothers is really gonna get fucked because i i don't think it's gonna win this category because no. it was so no. long ago it'd be so weird if game of the year 2019 went to a game from 2018 it'd just be bizarre and i think like I think people who are voting on this agree with that. Yeah, the Smash is going to win something. It's probably unfortunately yeah, it's probably win. not going to be this. They'll win some stuff. Uh, Sekiro also, is not going to be game of the year. Yeah, I don't think so. I think like when 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 I was selling Sekiro, mm-hmm. the week that it came out, yeah, 
everybody who wanted to buy that game bought it in the first week yeah. and I never sold another copy after that. Uh, <laughs> That's how I feel that game went. Yeah. It sold gangbusters for a right away. solid week. Um, I'm, sure, too. I'm sure Activision is happy with it. Um, oh yeah, I'm sure. They made money without yeah, doubt. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, Sekiro, I don't think, uh, I don't know. I feel like... It's just a, such a small audience, even, dude. But even people within that audience who love Soulsborne games, like, I feel like they played it and they were like, it's good, we like it. I feel like those same people also probably played Resident Evil and were like, Resident Evil's better. Yeah, that there's an overlap there and I think uh, I think that's happening as well. Um, I don't think Death Stranding's gonna get it. It doesn't deserve it. I don't think it, no, I definitely don't think it deserves it. Um, I want Control to get it. I think Outer Worlds is an RPG and it's going to clean up like in other places like narrative and RPG. Um, I think it's Resident Evil 2. It ha- Dude, Resident Evil 2 has a real good shot. Yeah. But I don't think so. Yeah. I think Resident Evil 2, there's going to be people who consider it a remake. Yeah. And, like we'll cross that off their list just because just of that. Just on account of that, which is so stupid. And the reason, and looking at that, it's... it's Smash Brothers has a real good chance, but again, that older, that so, so, so old yeah. that I think it knocks it off the list. I think it's going to be Outer Worlds. Okay, interesting. I could see it. I could see it happen. Because Control was kind of divisive, especially for people who played it on PS4. There's shit, you know, like crashing and slow down. People never had remember one. that. Never had one. You probably got it when the patch hit, though. Unless you bought it day one. I bought it day one. And I played it like day two. Okay, so yeah. then maybe you. I got lucky. That I got lucky. Um, Death Stranding was very divisive that's gonna show yeah it's not gonna win game of the year resident evil 2 had like i said has a chance sekiro doesn't have a chance uh it's, it's outer worlds or it's it's uh resident evil 2 i just i just feel like it's outer worlds matt that took us an hour i'm sorry that's what <laughs> i didn't realize that Do you want it? we can cut it up into two shows uh hey yeah but we had the whole intro where we're talking about thanksgiving and stuff so Let's redo know. the intro. Cut Ugh. the intro in. Ugh. Hmm. I'm getting some behind the scenes footage here. Yeah, but then the Thanksgiving yeah. episode doesn't go up. When does that go up? Because, like, either we have to put this up to be there for the Game Awards, or we have to put the Thanksgiving up to be there for Thanksgiving. We'll figure it out. Uh, I'm going to say it's one episode. And uh, I don't know. Should we cut the Thanksgiving stuff, Matt? What do you think? No, let's just do it. We already, we already wrote it all out. Yeah? Let's do it. Let's go for it. Uh, There'll be timestamps, so... All right. Let's do a little fade to black, and then we're going to fade black in, back in. And goodbye. And we're back. Okay. Uh, guys, that pretty much closes out our Game Awards podcast. Predictions podcast. Predictions podcast. Uh, when this goes up, it's going to be uh, a few days... Should be like, right. yeah, maybe like five or six days before the Game Awards. Yeah, so Game Awards should be just around the corner for you guys. Uh, we hope uh, you're excited about it. We hope it's a good time. We hope we get some cool announcements. Um, do you think we'll get any cool like, game announcements? Do you think Rocksteady is going to finally show their fucking game? I think it'd be kind of weird if they didn't. I think that this mm-hmm. might have been what they were waiting for. I, spe- I can't believe that it hasn't been announced by now, especially when they Dude, had, it's had that weird tweet like right before. Oh, when they were talking about before that PlayStation. Uh, right before access, that thing, I, I, there was a PlayStation and an Xbox conference. Not mm-hmm. conference. There was like a Xbox. Uh, there was an Xbox conference and a state of play. A PlayStation state, state of play, play. in the same day. Xbox Live or what? What did they call it? Not Xbox Live. I Xbox, don't know. X- uh, I don't care. They had like a, a little thing they did. Uh, Xbox Direct is what it was. Yeah, basically. Um, and then they they made a tweet right before that. Rocksteady did. Yeah. Rocksteady did about Batman. Nothing happened on Xbox or, or not, PlayStation. Not Rocksteady. Uh, WB Montreal. The guys oh, yeah, yeah, who right. we think are working. We on thought they Batman. were going to announce Quarter Vales. Um, and they didn't. Nope. So I don't. I I would like to see something like that. Um, maybe. Do you think we'll see a lot of um any next gen titles shown yet? I think you will. But I don't think they will announce them as a next gen. Title. Okay, they'll just be like, "Here's a new game," yep. and you'll be like, "Whoa, this looks way better." Yeah, if it's than... some, something looks astoundingly good, it's like this is not probably a PS5 or next Xbox game. Um, alrighty, I, I guess that's it. Do we need to do anything else to close out the podcast, Matt? Any other business we can take care of? Yeah, where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me at Richard Eiley on Twitter. R I C H A R D I L I E. Boom, it's right there. Um, and then Matt, you are. At from NJ to CA. 
The two is a number two. Yes, exactly. And then follow us at Nerdthusiast. Please. Uh, like and subscribe to us on you know YouTube, on any of your like preferred pos- podcast channels. Give us comments. Give us... Rate us five stars. Thumbs up. Yeah. Like us. Tell your friends and family Ooh, yes. if you enjoy our stuff to yeah. check it out because that will help us grow. If you have other like friends who are gamers, if you're like, you know, on forum boards with friends, if you're in group chats and online communities and you're like, hey, you want to look into these people who also talk about video games, let it, let them know about us. Uh, it helps us out a lot and uh, we need it or else Matt will die. Yes. Yeah. On a countdown uh, time we're like R2-D2. Exactly. He needs more likes. He needs he needs that likesin from uh, Death Stranding. That's a thing, by the way, Matt. Did you know about that? Yes, you have to like the things. Uh, no, in in the world of Death Stranding, there is a chemical po- compound discovered in the brain that is triggered that makes a person feel good called likesin, and it's usually gotten by getting likes on social media. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's called uh, like uh, serotonin, I think. Oxytocin or something. Like this. Yeah, but this is a separate compound that's specifically triggered by social media. Makes sense. Well, it doesn't. Uh, <laughs> but yeah guys thanks so much uh, enjoy the game awards and we will see you soon Bye-bye. bye bye Keely fix them I love my power glove it's so bad <laughs>